Alright, so this is aggro Earthrite rune. Um, Earth rune is a archetype that was present since the uh, beginning of Shadowverse, but it's changed a fair amount. Uh, the the deck has always been kind of bad and kind of overshadowed by the spell boost variants, but the main thing that's different is that Earthrite Rune has traditionally been a control deck, like a control kind of a grindy deck, right? And uh, that's been true for every expansion, you know, the original one, to Darkness Evolved, into uh, Rise of Bahamut, and you know, every single expansion, Earthrite Rune has gotten some really, really good cards, but even with all the all the new cards, it's never really been able to become a very, very strong deck. You know, always, always slightly weaker than its uh, the spell boost counterparts. In Tempest, um, Earthrite Rune got a lot of cards, but because of the the current meta, uh, specifically because of Dragon being so strong. And because of the existence of uh, Aegis Haven, um, it's kind of impossible to play any kind of control deck that's not either Haven or uh, Nephthys Shadow in this meta. Because, you know, if you play control, you will never out-control Dragon, and you'll never beat Aegis. So because of that, Control Earthray is completely dead in the Tempest meta. I don't know if it'll be dead forever. You know, maybe, maybe in the newest or newer expansions, Earthray will get some kind of ridiculous endgame win condition. Like maybe they'll get their own version of Aegis, or maybe they'll get some kind of a strong mid-game follower that will help them get back on the board. But yeah, for now, Control Earthrite is dead. And I feel like Psy Games already knew about this, you know, when they were designing the expansion and testing it, which is why the majority of cards, the majority of Earthrite cards at least, given to uh, Rune in this expansion, end up promoting like a tempo slash aggro style of Earthrite, rather than the control Earthrite style that they've been known for. So anyways, uh, this is an aggressive deck, and there's not really a a consensus on what the correct way to build this deck is, so let's just first start with the core cards. These are the cards that uh, everyone agrees have to be in the deck and are basically three copies each. So core cards. Uh, Two of the core cards are two of the new cards that were given to Rune through the new Earthrite cards. So first up, there's Major Nightfall. This is a 3-drop, three 3-2 three stats, so vanilla stats, but it's aggressively statted. You know, it's 3-2 instead of 2-3. And then if you get off her Earthrite effect, then she gets plus 1, plus 1, and ambush. So she becomes a 4-3 ambush. So just like that, as long as you get her effect off, then she's overstatted. And because she's ambushed, that means she's basically guaranteed to get off an attack. And this, since this is an aggressive deck, 95% uh, of the time, Major Nightfall is going face. So that's 4 guaranteed damage, you know, or 6, depending on if you decide to evolve her. Okay, very, very good aggressive minion. And then we have this one, Halo Golem. So Halo Golem is a 4 cost 4 3, so again, vanilla stats, gets full plus 2 plus 2 and evolve, but he's aggressively statted, you know, 4 3 instead of 3 4. And he has this amazing Earthrite ability. If you activate it, then he deals 3 damage to an enemy. And because the text says enemy, that means that 3 damage can go face. And again, since this is an aggressive deck, 95% of the time that 3 damage is going to go face. Uh, the only time that 3 damage would not be going face is is if there's like a, a, um, there's a trade that's too good to ignore, or... You have a very, very important follower in the field that you want to protect. But yeah, most of the time it's going face. So those are the core cards. And then um, one thing that separates this deck from other you know, aggressive decks or aggro decks in the meta is the amount of burn in here. So obviously Halo Golem provides great burn. It's 3. Major Nightfall is not burn, but it's ambush, so basically guaranteed to get off some damage. We still have Piercing Rune. And then we also have Levy. Levy is also very, very important. Um, if you evolve him, then he gets the Crimson Sorcery, which is another source of burn. 1 PP deal 3. Super efficient. The uh, the Levy and Piercing Room combination is still very, very potent. Although obviously weaker since uh, Piercing Room got nerfed. Since Piercing Room costs 2 now instead of 1. After uh, you get that evolution effect. 
And then the, the rest of the deck. The rest of the deck is where no one can come to a consensus of how to build it. Uh, I have seen some people, you know, actually run one drops, you know, since typically aggro decks do want to run one drops, so they run goblins. Um, I don't have goblins in my deck. But um, other important cards, you do need Crafty Warlock as well as Dwarf Alchemist. So Dwarf Alchemist is a uh, vanilla 2-2, gives you an Earth Essence, very, very good. And, you know, at first glance, Dwarf Alchemist seems to be just better than Crafty Warlock in every way, right? So it's like, you know, why exactly would you ever run Warlock when Dwarf Alchemist exists? And the reason in this deck is for consistency and for redundancy, because you absolutely need to activate the Earthward effects for Nightfall and Halo Golem. So because of that, we run both, both of them, Alchemist and Warlock, just to guarantee that we have Earthwise available. And of course the other important thing is that because Warlock generates the Essence when he dies, then you don't actually have to spend the 1 PP to summon the Earth Essence. So yeah, there, there are situations where Warlock is better. Uh, the other reason why it's acceptable to run Warlock right now is because Forest is no longer like a huge part of the meta. Like obviously, you know, Forest is still really strong, right? But Forest is not like tier 1 or anything, so... You don't get punished for playing Warlock, you know, with a, with a fairy ramming into it, or Elf Child May. It doesn't happen as often, so he is better now. And then, um, so we fill in the low drops, and then for the top end, we have Magic Girl Mel V. So this is a very, very interesting card that Rune got. Um, it actually doesn't really fit into a specific arch archetype, but it's very, very good for this one. So what she does is she's a 5 plus 4, 4, and then when you play her, she makes both players draw cards until they both have 7 cards in hand. So that's very, very good for this deck. This is an aggressive deck, so we will be running out of cards very, very quickly. And, you know, typically, or not typically, but something will happen very, very often is by turn 5, turn 6, you'll be in top deck mode, you might have, you know, only 1 or 2 cards in hand. So at that point, Melby's amazing, because she could draw, like, you know, up to five, six, seven cards there. So yeah, Melvi is a great way to refill, uh, similar to Daria, although unlike Daria, you know, she doesn't have a spell boost effect, so you don't want to keep her in the mulligan. And then that's basically it when it comes to core cards. Um, and I'll admit that right now that uh, I'm not really sure if this deck is the, the correct way to build the deck. Um, or what I have is the correct way to build it. You know, I've seen a lot of other builds. And um, I guess I'll go over why I picked some of the cards. So for aggressive decks, um, you know, why I have Lyriel and Angel of Word. These two have great synergy together. Uh, for one, they also allow you to ping things, which is great, right? Especially against uh, Shadow. And then uh, there's this card, Remy Rami Witchy Duo. So this is a very, very strong... Earthright card, but it was a card that kind of fell out of favor in the previous meta, and that was because in the previous meta, uh, healing. Healing is really important. But since we're an aggressive deck, we don't really care about healing. And you know, other than burn, one thing that all aggressive decks want to do is to put out a lot of stats very, very efficiently. And right now, um, if you are able to pull off uh, Remy and Rami's Earthright effect and evolve, then it's still an amazing value. Because you evolve her, she turns to a 5-6, and then she also summons a Guardian Golem, which is a 3-3 ward. So essentially that's 8-9 worth of stats for play for uh, four play points. Yeah, there's really no other card in the game for that cost that provides that much value. So yeah, Remy Rami is great here. Um, I guess the, the, the couple cards in my build that I'm not too sure of, if they're optimal, are Fina, and Price and Magic. So Price and Magic, you know, honestly, this is not a very aggressive card. This is 100% a control card. But I do think there is merit to running this in an aggressive deck because the Banish, uh, it's very, very important and very, very useful against the two most popular decks right now. So Price and Magic is like the best way to answer a Ayala if you're up against Dragon. And then if you're up against Shadow, 
it's very very good to get rid of those you know really pesky last words followers like say the opponent plays a uh what is that the the three cost one one the the guy that when he dies he summons two skeletons i forget oh uh, bone, bone chimera bone chimera i remember so price of magic is a great answer to bone chimera and then if they if they're also able to get their god curve you know one drop two drop into prince catacomb then price of magic is another very very useful banish you can use it on their two drop that gain the last words there so yeah i think it's a good card even though it doesn't really seem to fit an aggressive deck and then fina um fina again if you evolve her she provides you an amazing amount of value so you get a 5 6 and a 2 2 and you draw a card but um in all the games i played with this deck um fina didn't really do all that much work so I might have to play a little more, but maybe it's correct to remove Fina and add in something else. Like, say, replace her with a Demonic Strike or something. So yeah, that's that's what this deck is all about. It's a very, very aggressive. Um, basically centered around Major Nightfall, Halo Golem. Doing a lot of burn, sending to face. Running a very, very low curve. Um, and another one cool thing about this deck is that it's very, very cheap. You'll notice right away, this deck has no legendaries. So it's a really, really cheap deck, and there are a couple of golds. But honestly, like, uh, out of all the golds that this deck runs, most of them are replaceable. The only gold I would say is irreplaceable is the Levy. You absolutely need three copies of Levy for this deck. Like, must have. The Melvi is very, very important as well. You know, just so that you don't run out of steam. Just like a way to draw cards if you get into top deck mode. But I think this deck is still playable if you have less than three copies of Melvi. Like if you have one or two copies, still very playable. And then the Mutagenic Bolts. Uh, this card also is definitely not core. Uh, the main reason why I have it in this deck is because it's very, very good against Shadow when they get to past turn six. Like say if they play, uh, what is that? The Death Breath. It's a really, really great way to punish that. It's also pretty good against Ouroboros. You know, like just Polymorph the 8-4, turn to Flame Wrapped. But if you don't have Mutagenic Bolt, you can easily replace it with like a more Burn or a Dance of Death or something like that. So yeah, really, really cheap deck. But um, I'm not entirely sure this is the correct build for it. So yeah, if you do have, if you do have suggestions or if you have a build that's that you've had a lot of success with, then yeah. Feel free to post it in the comments. Hmm. Going second is bad. Keep the two drop. Keep Remy Rami. It's like it's our best uh, turn four evolve play. Other than Levy. Oh, he skips. That's good. So, there's a choice here between playing Crafty Warlock and Dwarf Alchemist. Now, Dwarf Alchemist is just generally better stat-wise than Crafty Warlock, but the difference is that when Warlock dies, it gives us the Earth Sigil right away. We don't have to you know, spend 1 PP to play it. And, you know, Shadow Shadow doesn't usually play uh, one damage pain cards, so Crafty Warlock. Trade. Angel of the Word. Get rid of the Skeleton. Alright, easy play here, Remy Rami. We just get an insane amount of stats here. Oh, 
Alright, you can't clear it. That's good. Time to go on the offensive. So this fly four is going face 100%. Um, we can use Illyrial to clear off the opponent's Illyrial. And that gives us enough play points for uh, a couple of other plays. Since we're going to be evolving Lyrial, we're not going to play Levy. So we have a choice of uh, Dwarf Alchemist or Red Hot Ritual. And it's better to do Dwarf Alchemist because that sets up our Mage of Nightfall for next turn. So we're winning the damage race right now. Oh, okay. I thought he had the uh, zombie party or something. Alright, now we do Nightfall. Levy evolve. Set up lethal for the next turn. So that sorcery, that is going face. 100%. That doesn't even save it. Dragon, this matchup is rough. We want to go first. There we go. It's still really rough though. So keep the two and three. Uh, if they get early ramp into Rahab or like uh, early Sybil, it's like a uh, very hard to win. You might be wondering why I didn't play the uh, Angel Ward instead, which is better on curve. It's because I picked up the second Halo Golem, so that gives us two sigils, so we can use both golems. Alright, now we play Angel. The best play here, um, the raw hub is kind of annoying, but yeah, the best answer here is to Halo Golem face and evolve Halo Golem to get rid of the raw hub. Done a lot of damage so far. And we even have Melby to refill. Almost there. Oh, 
Wow, okay. That was pretty unlucky for him to not have a salamander. Alright. Refill. Get more burn, hopefully. Nope. This puts him at 2. So if he plays anything and doesn't heal, then he's dead. To Piercing Rune.
加減なしよ。本気で行くわ。空を犯かす者、何時に裁きを。私の世界。を傷つけるやつは神様だって許しゃしない<笑>傷つけるやつは神様だって許しゃしない何悪欲を汚せし者に裁きを手加減なしよ本気で行くわパパママロナを守ってね